I put everything in a $5 ammo can from Walmart because it's relatively waterproof and pretty cheap. The battery is a 12 volt 7 amp hour lead acid battery from Amazon, a 20 watt solar panel, a pretty cheap no name PWM solar charge controller. The main outputs use this panel that's meant for cars. It has two USB 3.0 quick charge ports and a voltmeter built into it, uh, a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug and a switch to power them on. To connect the main solar power, I'm using SAE connectors. And for other solar panel inputs and a lot of the outputs, I'm using 5.5 by 2.1 DC barrel jack. I designed a lot of the parts for this in CAD and 3D printed them, but you can make everything work without a 3D printer. You can use just tape and glue to hold the battery in. And for the panels, you can just drill holes and mount it directly to the ammo can. But since I have a 3D printer, I might as well use it. The battery bracket attaches in two pieces, mainly because it couldn't all fit on my printer at once. And basically the two pieces just screw together and slide over on top of the battery, which then gets screwed down to the bottom of the ammo can, which holds the battery in place. Then the solar charge controller gets screwed on top of this mount. For the input panel, I designed it again in CAD, but of course you could just drill holes and mount this directly into the ammo can. I then designed a bracket that clamps both to the back of the panel and to the SAE connectors to make sure that they don't pull out of the ammo can since it's just thin plastic and wouldn't do much for holding them on. The input panel has the input SAE connector for the solar panel, two jacks for other solar panels or connecting another car battery or something like that, and one direct input slash output that goes right to the battery so you can measure voltage or whatever. And then the same thing for the output panel. There's the voltmeter USB quick charge combo. As you can see, the voltmeter looks like it's flickering. That's just an effect of the camera. It doesn't do that in real life. The 12 volt cigarette lighter plug. Uh, we have three 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter DC jacks for charging radios or connecting to other batteries, etc. And one 5.5 by 2.5 millimeter jack, which can connect to my TS100 soldering iron. The charge controller has settings for how high to charge the battery to, how low to let the battery drain to, uh, what voltage the battery will turn back on at once the solar panel has charged it adequately. And here is the finished product. This is a little touchscreen Arduino thermostat I built that gets powered by USB. Of course, it charges cell phones as well. And as you can see, it's drawing the full one amp that the iPhone draws. Here's an Olight M2R Pro USB rechargeable flashlight. It can even charge my Redivis RT82 radios, about three of them at the same time since there's three jacks for output. This is a lithium jump pack for a car, and the jump pack itself has USB outputs, 18 volt outputs for laptops, and 12 volt outputs, and of course it can start a car too, so this in itself is pretty useful. For future upgrades, I'd like to design some kind of stand for the solar panel to be mounted on. 
As you can see, I've designed some kind of pterodactyl claw looking thing that doesn't really work and it just falls over. If you wanted to plug any 120 volt AC appliances in, you of course have to buy an inverter, which is pretty cheap, about $15 on Amazon. Another upgrade I'd like to do is replace the lead acid battery with a lithium battery, which has uh, more cycles. It can cycle way more times than the lead acid battery can. Uh, it's a lot lighter, but it's a little bit more expensive at $30 versus $19 for the lead acid battery of, of the same capacity. Now this build isn't perfect, the solar charge controller has a display on it that is always on, so even when the solar panel is not providing any electricity, this will be drawing some power. So to fix this, you need a double pole single throw switch, so at the flick of one switch it'll cut the power both from the battery to the charge controller and from the solar panel to the charge controller. And the reason this is necessary is because if the battery is not connected, but the solar panel is, it'll damage the charge controller. So how does this compare to something commercially available? This is a solar battery pack by Bowdens. It has all the things that mine has with an inverter built in and twice the capacity in lithium batteries that mine has for about $140. So to build it yourself, it's only saving you $71. But I have fun building these kinds of things and encourage others to do the same. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.